Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions here with Pastor Sutton on this Friday. Friday, August 12th. 12th day of August, the year of our Lord 2022. <laughs> I was just thinking as I said that. Um, uh, there's a, a trend in... Um, uh, should, I don't know if I should say science. Um, there's a trend in uh, in the learned community to no longer say <clears throat> BC and AD, right? Uh, BC before Christ, AD Anno Domini, right? Anno Domini. The year of our Lord, and uh, so there's a trend in in the uh, uh, well, how do I want to say it in the scholarly learned places, right? You and I, we understand BC and AD. We don't have a problem with that, but they have they have taken it upon themselves uh, to decide that um, we should now use BC. And BCE, and they say BC meaning before uh, BCE. No, it's BCE and CE. BCE before Common Era, right? So that would be and CE Common Era, right? What, but what determines the jump over point between the before common era and the common era? Well, it's Jesus. And BC is before Jesus, before Christ, and AD is Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, the, 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 the years that follow after Christ. It's not that hard, people. Don't make a big deal out of it. Of course, they do that because we live in a world that is increasingly. And, and increasingly and increasingly and increasingly secularized and made um, not tolerant of Christianity and accepting of all other things because the general trend of the world is to do what is right in its own sight, which has always worked really well in the scriptures, hasn't it? When people do what is right in their own sight, in their own heart, in their own mind. <clears throat> so, here we are. 2022 Anno Domini, A.D. After our Lord. Uh, so, uh, good morning. Uh, Deb, and... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here now. I don't want to do what I did yesterday. Yesterday, somehow, the scroll bar for my uh, comments for what you guys are saying has disappeared. So I can't tell where I am at in the list. And it scrolls down as people add stuff. So at the top was me saying, Good morning. Det er en god dag. It's going to be a good day. Um, and then on down the road. Um, but it scrolls up as you add comments, and I don't necessarily want to see it. That's my problem, not yours. Mushtaq, good evening, brother. You know, sometimes just for for giggles, you should put up the your greeting in, uh, I don't know what, what's the language in Pakistan? Um, is it Pakistani? Uh, is it, is it, you know, put up what your greeting is. We won't probably understand it or be able to read it, but it might be interesting. Okay, I admit it. Uh, this time on Duolingo working on Norwegian things is making me somewhat interested in philo philo philology again. Study of languages. Spoken languages. Um, not nearly as much as my wife. She's so much better at it. Anyway, Mushtaq, good evening, good morning. Brenda, good morning. Uh, this week, 65 with a high of 76 in Kalamazoo. I don't know what we're doing today. Um, looks like we're 59 right now according to the cloud service and mostly cloud or the cloud service the weather service and mostly cloudy somehow that doesn't surprise me because when i look out the window 
it's mostly cloudy and it looks kind of cool out there. I was talking about weather rocks yesterday. Sometime we'll talk about weather rocks. Jill and John, good morning up there in Rhinelander. And there is Geraldine and Neil. Good morning to you guys. Deb and Ann, good morning to you. Say hi to Grant when you get a chance. <laughs> Renee, good morning. Very pretty day in Michigan. <clears throat> Renee, would you do me a favor? This weekend when you have a chance, would you greet Jeff and Corinne and the kids for me? I just... They were, they were in my prayers the other day for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but just uh, say hi to them for me. Connie, good morning to you and Robin up there in the big city of Harshaw. Jerry, good morning to you. And Verna, good morning. Oh, Urdu. Oh, well, okay. So that's a um, that's an Indian dialect, if I remember right. Um, we had some uh, IT guys... Um, when I worked at Storm Foods, uh, who were doing an implementation of SAP, and um, uh, I believe they spoke Urdu. I, I, well, they used English between each other because there's so many dialects in India. So, uh, but Urdu, I think, one of them anyway, the one I worked with, the gentleman I worked with, his, <clears throat> um, what I want to say, his native dialect was, was Urdu. Good morning. Let's uh, get into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order. And we begin here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, that doesn't look like what I typed in. Hmm. Psalm 99, 1 through 5. I hope that's what I, I hope that's what I put in the post. If it's not, I'm going to apologize. Um. The reading's right, I'm pretty sure. All right. Psalm 99, 1 through 5, whether I put it up right or not. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord reigns. <laughs> Matthew's gospel is all about the Lord's reign. Um, now, I'm taking that a little bit from um, the uh, Concordia commentary series, the new one, um, where uh, I believe it was Dr. Veltz wrote the commentary on Matthew. Um <clears throat> Um, but but I, th I think when he translates kingdom of heaven, uh, he translates it not kingdom of heaven, but as the Lord's reign. Or at least in his comments, he says that. Um, the Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. Fear, right? Trembling is brought on by fear. Uh, fear is the beginning of wisdom. The Lord has the authority to take and give away. The, the Lord has the authority to make us alive and to destroy. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Why is it the patriarchs of the scriptures when the in the Old Testament, right? The patriarchs. Um, Abraham. Isaac. Uh, 
Jacob. Um, when the Lord appears to them or shows his face, even Ezekiel and Isaiah, Jeremiah, when the Lord shows his face or gives them a vision, they fall to their knees. They put their face on the ground. They eat dirt. Um, knowing that, that they have no authority by which they can stand before the Lord. And yet, there they are. And um, they fear him. We don't fear God anymore. We don't, we don't, as a people, right, as a secular people, we don't fear God. And, and as a Christian people, we should continue to fear God. There is a, there is a reason to fear God. God is righteous and just and holy and perfect. We do not deserve to be in his presence. We deserve eternal punishment, temporal suffering. All right, let's get on, on to our reading here because um, I'm probably being needlessly, well, whatever. Um, get a little signal drop there too. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 3 to 25. So we jumped a little. I think we were, I want to say we were in, uh, yeah, chapter 26 yesterday. So we jumped chapter 27. Um, oh, this is a good, this is, this is good stuff. This is, maybe this is a... There's a reason that we're here. But let's, uh, let's look at this. 1 Samuel chapter 28, beginning at verse 3. I don't know what happens in 1 and 2, but we're in verse 3. Now, Samuel had died. Oh, I think chapter 27 is the death of Samuel. Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him, and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the necromancers out of the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other garments and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Divine for me by a spirit, and bring up for me whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the necromancers from the land. Why then are you laying a trap for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is his appearance? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed his fa with his face to the ground and paid homage. <laughs> then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am, great dis in, I am in great distress for the... Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me. 
for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Because, he did not, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. And Saul fell at once, full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. And the woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Behold, your servant has obeyed you. I have taken my life in my hand and have listened to what you have said to me. Now, therefore, you also will obey your servant. Let me set a morsel of bread before you and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words. So he arose from the earth and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fattened calf in the house, and she quickly killed it. And she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread of it. And she put it before Saul and his servants, and they all ate. Then they rose and went away that night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It says the, there's an additional reading of 1 Samuel 29 through 30. Um, I have a feeling. No? Yeah, tomorrow's 1 Samuel 31. It's going to be shorter. We're going to have the death of Saul. But let's deal with this text before us here. Mediums and necromancers. Um, these are um, the things of the uh, second commandment. Let me let me do this just to be sure. Hey, Michael, good morning. Um, the second commandment. What is the second commandment? Well, uh, the second commandment, you shall not, not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, or as we teach it today, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. This means we should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, or use satanic arts. Lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. And um, satanic arts, necromancy, the speaking to the dead, the raising of the dead, um, necro, death, Latin for death, um, and, 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 and medium, a witch, a diviner. Um, these are not the things of God. These are the things of the dark places. And so uh, when Saul goes to do this, he furthers his own condemnation. He knew it's wrong because he had already pushed them all out of the land, right? Saul had put the mediums and the necromancers out of the land. But now he's lost the prophet Samuel, who we didn't listen to anyway. And to further things, he also um, is now facing the Philistines without God's word before him. And he knows that the Spirit has left him. He knows that He's turned against God, and God has turned against him. And so he hides himself as if he can hide from God, as if, as if he can go and do this thing without God knowing about it. And he sneaks into the low districts of Emdor, and there he meets up with this witch, medium, necromancer. And she brings forth the spirit of Samuel. Now, I, I, in many and various commentaries, I've read that this isn't the spirit of Samuel. This is a demon. Um, and yet seems here that it is Samuel. Now, I, I, let's not deal with that today. Let's deal with what the message is. Um, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his wrath against Amalek, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. The Lord raises up, the Lord tears down. The Lord gives strength, the Lord takes strength. The Lord gives, through the gift of faith, endurance to carry us through our day. Right? No matter what we're dealing with each day, no matter what we're facing, we don't face it alone. No matter what our struggle is each day, we don't face it by ourselves. We face it 
with Christ. I am with you to the ends of the age. He is there. I, when I teach catechism, I tell the kids, <clears throat> when we talk about the second article of the creed, who Jesus is, um, and who God is, for that matter, all three persons of the, of the Trinity that are in the creed, um, the, one of the big things to take away is the three, I call them the three omnis, right? Omniscient, omnipotent, um, omniscient, omnipotent. I can never get all three, though. That's, that's why I say, <clears throat> kids, remember all three, because I never do. Um, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, right? God is everywhere. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Um, you are not. You are present in a specific time and place. You have limitations of strength and ability. <clears throat> you are, by your created nature, by your fallen created nature, sinful and turned away from God. But by the new creation in you that God has given you, you are holy to him. You are set apart. You are able to love God and be loved by God. You are able to be in his presence. You are able to call upon him in your time of need, and he will hear your prayers and answer you according to his good and gracious will. Samuel, or demon, <clears throat> tells this to Saul, and he tells him, your time has come. The Philistines are going to come against you and against all Israel because of your actions. You are the king. <clears throat> and you will die. He didn't say you'll die. He says you'll join me here tomorrow. And tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. And Saul falls to the ground, having not eaten for a day, and filled with fear, fear because of the words of Samuel. Is it repentance? I'm not sure it is. Being afraid of God is not necessarily repentance. Um, repentance requires... Uh-oh. Things are going badly here. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. I'm offline. Mm, come on. What happened? <clears throat> what happened? Am I online or not? Um, I should be online. Am I online or not? Oh, it says I'm my connection's restored, but I got no. No stream going out. Come on. All right. All right. There we are. Uh, sorry about that. We're back. We're back, I think. Okay. I was saying, I, I was saying at verse 20, Samuel falls full length, is it? And he's afraid. It's fear that causes him to fall. Is this repentance? I don't think so. Because repentance is more than just fear. Fear can drive repentance. But Saul's not seeking to do better, right? He's not, he's not seeing his sin, seeking God's forgiveness, and desiring to do better. He's simply afraid. We're not afraid of the Lord in the same way. We fear God and his wrath. But in Christ Jesus, that fear breeds repentance and repentance in us. And we trust by faith in God's forgiveness that came through the blood of Christ shed for us. And so when we're afraid of God's wrath, we do what Luther did. I did these things. Forgive me, Lord. And we live in the blood of Christ knowing we've been forgiven. Not for our own sakes, but for the sake of Christ and his holy name. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I see what's going on. I just checked my Starlink thing here, and it says there's been a network issue uh, for a minute between 8.55 and 8.56. Let's continue with the Lord's Prayer as he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Friday morning, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, my Savior, I approach you in this morning hour, beseeching you to let your grace and mercy go with me through the day. Let your presence give me the blessed assurance of your divine protection amid dangers, guidance amid uncertainty and strength against temptation. Bless the labors of my hands. Bless our home with your continued presence. Bless our nation and let righteousness and pre peace prevail. Bless your church and keep her in your word and truth. Bless our schools and grant that boys and girls may grow in grace and knowledge of you and of your will. Remember not the sins of my youth nor our many, my many trespasses. Bring me safely home tonight. Keep me steadfast in faith through Jesus Christ, who is my Redeemer. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer, body, mind, or soul. Strengthen them in the face of the fears of this world. Remind them that you are with them always. Especially this day, we pray for Peter and Karen, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Ashley, Bob, Megan, Mike, Kathy, Ashton, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant us, O Lord, your mercy through Christ, who is our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings uh, may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, even with some glitchiness here that brings to a close our uh, daily devotions. God's peace be with you. We'll be back here tomorrow, Saturday morning. Ooh, yeah, Saturday morning uh, for our, our little time together in God's word, our daily devotion. God's peace be with you. Till then. Got to find the right button here.